Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm Marilyn and my channel is Making with Marilyn. Now I love to do sublimation projects, but on today's video, I'm gonna do one I've never done before. I'm really excited about it. I hope these turn out adorable. We're gonna see you together. Now I got these sublimation placemats off of Amazon a while back. When I received them, they came in this little bag and it was vacuum packed. So I took them out of the bag, I let them sit for a day or two, and this is how they looked after a day or two. When I got them out of the bag, they were super wrinkly. So I went ahead and pressed most of them, and after I pressed them, they look like this. Now, in addition to these sublimation placemats, I'm going to use some heat resistant tape, I'm going to use a lint roller, I'm going to print my images on my Epson EcoTank 15000. Now that's a printer that wasn't meant for sublimation, but when I bought it, I put Hippo sublimation ink in it instead of the ink that came with it. I really love the printer. It's a wide format printer and it prints my images really nice and crisp and clean. Now the designs that I'm going to put on these placemats are designs that I made from elements out of Creative Fabrica. I'll show the designs to you here in just a minute, and then I'll put links to those Creative Fabrica files in the video description below. So I used elements from those files, plus text in Inkscape. Inkscape is the design software that I use, as well as shapes in Inkscape, basically rectangles. These are really easy to put together, and I think they turned out so, so cute. So if you're interested in this type of video, Sit back, relax, and let's get started. I'm going to start by just showing you very briefly the designs. I'm going to print them out, and then we're going to meet right back here to get started. Now, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please consider doing that. If you do, tap that bell and select the all notifications. That way, YouTube lets you know anytime I upload new content. Now here's the sublimation placemats that I ordered, and I want to tell you two things about these. First of all, it says that they are 12 inches by 16 inches, and then down in the video description, it says about 12 by 16. Well, mine came, and they were more like 12 inches by 15 inches. You just need to know that because that's going to affect the size of your design. So don't necessarily use the size of design that I use today. Measure your placemats, and then use what's right for you. The second thing is, I accidentally ordered 16 of these. I don't need 16 of these. I should have just ordered eight. And notice there's not a huge saving for ordering 16 over eight. And then here's the designs that I made. Again, just like I said in the video intro, I used images off of Creative Fabrica. Now I did change some of the colors of these butterflies. I used a background that I got off of Creative Fabrica. And then for the green and the white boxes, I just use the rectangle tool. Then I use the font Hobo Standard and I added Sophia to this. All right, let's drag this one out of the way. Then you can see the one that I made for Gideon. For Gideon, I use these little dinosaurs that I found on Creative Fabrica. These little leaves were also part of the bundle that I used. Again, I used Hobo Standard for the name. I used rectangles for the white box and the brown boxes. For the background, I just made a rectangle here in Inkscape. I found the color I wanted, and then I added all these little dots to it. Since Gideon and Sophie are brother and sister, I wanted them to have one element in common, so I made my own polka dot pattern for that. Now to print these, I wanted to make sure that I printed on the right size of paper. I'll go up to File, down to Document Properties, and you can see I already made a custom setting for 19 inches wide by 13 inches tall. When you're printing in Inkscape, you do need to make sure that everything is on top of this little paper template. If it's something like this, anything off the paper template is not gonna print. So I'm gonna go ahead and print these one by one. Now I forgot to tell you the type of paper that I'm using in the video intro. I'm using Koala sublimation paper. If you watch my videos, you know I love HTV Ront sublimation paper. 
but I haven't bought any of that in 13 by 19, so I'm using Koala brand instead. Now with sublimation, you typically print in the mirrored image. So with my image selected, and notice I did 15 and a half inches wide by 12 inches tall, but to print these, I go up to object, flip horizontal, and it's ready to print. So I'm gonna go ahead and click File, Print. I'm using my Epson EcoTank 15,000 series. I'm gonna to go to Page Setup, change this to one-sided, make sure it's in color, and then on Advance, I always use high quality. After I've printed the one for Gideon, I'll do the exact same process for Sophia's. Now here's the two images that I printed. If you're new to sublimation, you might notice they don't look very vibrant. Look how dull this green looks, the orange, and then if I show you Gideon's, you'll really notice how dull that looks. That's how sublimation prints print. Once you add that high heat for an extended amount of time, the colors are really going to come out of these. Now I have some butcher paper. I buy this on a huge roll. I use it to protect my heat press. The butcher paper is cheap. The pads for your heat press isn't. So I tend to use a lot of butcher paper. Now the first thing that I want to do with my placemat is to go ahead and lint roll this. Now I want you to know I did preheat this. So I preheated it for about 15 seconds, and I'm gonna press these at 400, so I preheated them at 400. So I'm gonna go ahead and let roll them just to remove any stray fibers. And then because this image is a little bit larger than 15 inches, and my sublimation blank is just a little bit larger than 15 inches, my heat press is only 15 inches. I'm gonna to have to do two presses on each of these. I hope it turns out okay. I'd love to get a larger heat press. Maybe someday I will, but for now this is gonna to have to do. So these are considered burlap. That's what they're called on Amazon. And then on the back, they have something kind of like a stabilizer fabric. So I feel like it's burlap or faux burlap that's been bonded to something like stabilizer. Now it looks like I see a few more things on there, so let me take a little bit of time and really clean these up. Now I printed my designs at 12 inches by 15 and a half inches wide. If I were doing these again, I'd probably go just a little bit larger because my placemats, they fit in there. Well, and this one actually fits pretty well. <laughs> so I take that back. 12 by 15 and a half was fine for this one. Now these are not perfectly shaped. If you want perfectly shaped ones, you buy sublimation fabric, which is just 100% polyester fabric, and you sew your own. But if I sewed mine, they would be so much worse than this, so I'm going to use these. Now, since I have to move it around, I want to use a decent amount of tape on this. So I'm going to use this sublimation tape, or I'm sorry, heat-resistant tape. And I'm going to make sure I tape it down at least at all four corners. I've heard of sticky or tacky sublimation paper. I've never used it. 
if this were sticky or tacky, I probably wouldn't have to use this tape. But since I don't have that, I'm going to go ahead and use tape. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put two more pieces, one on each side. And you'll notice there is extra sublimation ink outside of this. That's why it's important that you use some butcher paper. This ink would all show up on the pad of your heat press if you didn't use this butcher paper. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this over. I'm going to have it paper side up. When I press this, I'm going to try this at 400 degrees for 45 seconds. So I'm going to basically press about this much, and then I'm going to have to move my paper over and press this much. Let's go ahead and get Gideon's ready before we do that. So I'm just doing the same thing, cleaning this mat off. Then I'm going to flip it over so that it is nice side down against the paper. And since I have everything in my design centered, I want to try to have this fairly centered. Now, my tail is pretty close to the side. It'll be okay, but I probably should have had the dinosaurs smaller than what they are. Let's just make sure everything's going to get covered. I think I can move it up a little bit. That looks fine. So I'll tape this down and then we're going to move over to the heat press and press these. While I'm waiting for my heat press to heat up, I'm going to go ahead and pre-press this butcher paper. I have a double layer already pressed, but I needed another piece. Notice how this just curls right up. So one tip that I have is go ahead and pre-press your butcher paper. Now that I've pre-pressed this, it is so much easier to work with. And I only did about five seconds on each area. Now we're going to start with Sophie's, and so I have a double layer of butcher paper under it. That's because you are going to have some of this ink that comes off on the paper. So I wanted to make sure it was a double layer. Then I'm going to have my other piece on top of it. My other piece is really huge. I can reuse this unless it gets ink on it. So I'm going to go ahead and pull my placemat and the image all the way to the front end of this. That way I know where it is on my press. So I'm going to press this at 400 degrees for 45 seconds. After I press this side, I'm going to move it over, press this side 45 more seconds, and then we're going to take a peek at this one before we do Gideon's. Because if it didn't work well, I want to be able to adjust before I do his. Now, just like everything else, when you are sublimating, you want to let it cool down just a little bit. Otherwise, if you start moving things around and it is still hot enough to sublimate, you could cause some blurring, also called ghosting. So I'm going to go ahead and let this cool off for about 20 seconds. Okay, I waited about a minute because I had a short conversation with my husband, but I haven't even peeked at it. Now, here is why you use the butcher paper. See all that ink around that? 
Okay, I want to reveal this to you and I together. So I'm going to hold it up. And I see in the camera it looks cute. Now I still need to take the tape off, but look at that. Oh my goodness, that's so cute. So cute. For really almost no money at all. What were these each? A dollar? I got 16 of them for $16.99, so a little more than a dollar. A little bit of sublimation ink, some paper. I ended up with that. Super cute. Now hopefully I don't have any white around the edges, and I don't. I love it! That turned out so nice. Alright, let's go ahead and do Gideon's. Now I have this double layer of paper, so I'm going to go ahead and just fold it the other way. This is a large piece of paper. So I'm going to fold it the other way. So now that ink is inside. Here's Gideon's placemat. Now, I'm going to go ahead and reuse this piece of paper, and then I want to make sure, again, that my paper and my design are up toward the top of this. That way, when I put it under the press, I know exactly where to press. Y'all, I am so, so happy with how that turned out. All right, we'll do two presses at 400 for 45 seconds. I'll meet you right back here. Now, just like last time, I want to let this cool off some. While I'm doing that, let's talk about this again. This really exceeds the expectations I had. I am just amazed at this. Okay, now I'm glad I actually ordered 16 of them. Okay, that is not going to sublimate any longer. This cooled off really pretty quickly. It's still a little bit warm, but it's fine. Again, we have that excess ink, so use your butcher paper. Now, it didn't go through to the second layer, but I still think when I have ink exposed, I will still use two layers. All right. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and reveal this to you and I at the same time. So cute! Now, hopefully, I have all parts of the dinosaurs on there. Again, I should have made the dinosaur part a little smaller just to make sure you get it all on there, but I did. It worked out fine. So let me take the tape off and I'll hold it up so you can see it really nice and close. Now, I do see a tiny, tiny bit of ghosting or a little bit of a double image with the word Gideon. And I'm wondering if when it went down, when the press went down, did it shift a little bit? Now, it is barely noticeable, but let me get up close to the camera so you see what I'm talking about. It really is barely noticeable, but when I have an issue like that, I wanna show you, I wanna be open and honest, and I want you to know what I truly experienced. I don't want to hide things like that. Now, do I need to redo this? No. It looks perfectly fine, but it had just a little bit of bleeding there. So here's Gideon again. And then I'll hold Sophia's up. 
They are really, really cute. So think of all the things you could do with these. I love the customization that you can do. You could use them for holidays. Really, you're only limited by your imagination. So thank you so much for joining me today. I truly do appreciate your time. And until my next video, bye-bye.